Talk Show, and I'm your host, Jezzeri. We've got a nice show tonight. We've got an important dignitary on here. I wanted you all to know her. What's your name, young lady? My name is Cami Cole. All right. And you're a singer? Yes, I am. Um, first off, first thing I want to do on this show is thank uh, the lady that sent your footage to me. Her name is Brenda Cook Brown Thompson. You want to thank her, girl? Thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. It's been a blessing, and I pray to God one day I get a chance to meet you. But thank you from the bottom of my heart. All right. We got that over with. We had to call your name, Brenda. All right. Um, tell my TV viewers about you. The pictures are going across and they seeing you, but tell my TV viewers about you. This interview is about you. Okay. Well, I started singing. Uh, remember my mother telling me stories at the age of five, um, singing different blues artists such as uh, ZZ Hills, B.B. King, Bobby Blue Band, and uh, my father, who is guitar slim Cole. And uh, so he began a, a love and put a fire in my soul, in my spirit for blues. So at a very young age of five, I began to sing blues and listen to my father play the guitar. So that is where I would say that I think the fire started. Okay. Uh, you said it was some other lady artists that inspired you too. So who are they? Absolutely. Um, as time went on, I joined a blues band and I, uh, at the age of 19, I joined a blues band. I was one of their uh, female background singers and, and one of the opening artists, you know, I would bring on the band. I was one of the, uh, one of the singers in the band. And I had the honor of singing Peggy Scott. I would sing Bill. And uh, that was one of my favorite songs and I would bring on the band and Everyone would just go crazy. I, I really love Peggy Scott. She has been a, a inspirational person to me. Um, I really look up to her, love her music, love her vocals. And when I heard the song Bill, you got to imagine, I was 19 at the time, so I didn't know what in the world Bill was all about. But, uh, you know, I learned a lot, and I could tell that. I said, I don't know who Bill is, or, or, or but, but this woman, she sang with so much passion. She she, 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 sang she can sing. She can. She can sing. With so much passion. It was from the heart. And so I said, my God, I just love this song. And I began to sing that song. And uh, as and when I very first, the very first band I joined, I would sing Peggy Scott. Peggy Scott. At the age of 19. You know, I had a chance to uh, film her birthday party and uh, interview her. That was my gift to her, and she is a she's so down to earth, down to earth. Now let's get back on on you, sister. You you went on to sing in this band at a, at a young age. Uh -huh. Okay, how did you come up? Uh, how did you come about knowing that this was a career for you? Well, I, I, it was just, it's something about the blues or something about music that is, is rooted in my soul. I, I veered off a little bit, went on to college in a nursing field, but then there was always something missing. There was always something missing. And, and, and that's the blues. And that's, that's just singing from, from the soul and from the heart. And uh, I learned a lot. Uh, from being on stage at a very young age and getting a chance to perform. And, and uh, then I had the honor of going on to American Idol and I competed on American Idol. But um, I'm so grateful and thankful that I had the chance to, to be a background singer and, and join into the, and, and get into the music at a very young age because now that I'm actually recording my own album, I feel like I'm seasoned and I'm ready. Now, now wait a minute, you went on American Idol. Um, the pictures are going across the screen, ladies and gentlemen. How did you how did you audition? How did you get that audition? I auditioned in Denver, Colorado, which is where I'm born and raised, born and raised in uh, Denver, Colorado. And uh, I auditioned and uh, I was blessed that they, they, they called me back to come back for another audition for my second audition. So I made it past five judges. OK, five judges gave me the green light. 
And then I went on, I got another date to come back and audition in front of Paula, Simon, and Randy. Once I auditioned in front of Paula, Simon, and Randy, um, and I was terrified, I was nervous, I was shaking, I mean, literally shaking in my in my shoes. And uh, he looked at me and he said, ma'am, he said, we love your style, we love your voice, welcome to Hollywood. So there is when I, I received my golden ticket and uh, got the pass to go on to L.A., to, to be on the show, and that was just a blessing. Wow. I know your family was excited <laughs> seeing... Absolutely. Wow. Seeing you on TV. Yes, yes, for the first time. Wow. So now, you've uh, you've sung all your life. You've been on American Idol. Now you got a CD that's coming out. Yes. When is your, now, C- when is your CD release? CD release will be on August 28th, and the title of my album is From the Heart. From the Heart. Mm-hmm. Okay, that picture has been going across the screen, and you all uh, see uh, From the Heart, the picture of the CD. Girl, I'm going to tell you something. When Brenda sent me, it was 2.30, and I appreciate you. Um, getting back with me. I, it was 2.30 in the morning and my buddy sent Brenda Cook. She sent this to me, Brenda Cook Brown Thompson. Thank you so much. She sent it to me and it popped up and I said, well, okay, if Brenda sent me something, she know what I'll look at. Okay, it got to be good cause I trust Brenda. So I, I clicked on it and you were singing and I said, wait a minute. This lady can sing. And uh, then I listened to a few songs and when you said, well, this is what got me on American Idol, and I'm going to sing it. And I, I said she also been on American Idol. And, but you were so laid back and cool with it. You you were so laid back. And I like people that's just cool and laid back and down to earth. And I said, well, I know she been on American Idol, but I'm finna try to get in touch with her. So that's when I inbox you. I say I'm an inboxer because she can sing. And I, I, wanted to, I want my TV viewers to hear her sing. I want I want him here saying and and you got back with me. I want to thank you for even getting back with me. You know, uh, I, I've sent off to a few people and they be so busy. They do. People be busy in their life. But you got back with me and, and we've chatted and talked and we talked about this interview and, and we getting it done. I, I like that. I like that. Because one thing about it, ladies and gentlemen, if you book her for a show, she's going to be there. She's coming. She's coming because I anytime if uh she'll text me, tell me, well, well, uh, I'm just checking with you and, and we just kept up like we've been knowing each other. And and I appreciate that, sister, because I wanted this to make it happen. Uh the pictures are going across the screen that are uh now you you also tell us a little bit about your entertain. You have a band too. I do. I have a band called uh Soul Connection. Yes, I do have a live band as well, and uh, that is just such a blessing. We have such a tight groove, and we enjoy, we just enjoy performing and entertaining and uh, and giving the folks what they're looking for. And a lot of people say that they're missing the, the soul from back in the day, and that's what I'm trying to bring back. I'm trying to take them back to them good old days. Wow, and, and, that, and that's the name of your song, one of your songs, uh, Take Me Back. Take yes, me back, yes. and and I I love that song, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all have got to hold on because after this uh interview at the end of the show, we're gonna we're gonna uh ha- have her to perform. She's gonna perform for us, so that's gonna be a, a very nice treat. Um, I am uh ecstatic. I just said I gotta interview her because she's a very pretty lady, and and you classy. And I, I just like your style. I like the way you sing. I like the way you bring it. And I mean, it's it's something that uh, even the kids can pat their foot to and dance. And I like that. I mean, because this show is a family show. And it's a beautiful song. It's a decent song. And I like bringing nice songs into their living room. Because they, they watch me on TV and they den in their living room. And that song, I said, that is the song. That is the song. Um do you have a contact number do you have a contact number yes i do i can be contacted at 337-504-1498 that's 337-504-1498 
Wow, been singing. This lady been singing ever since she was a little girl. And when I told her that I had interviewed Peggy Scott Adams, she just was, I love her. I love her. I hope I get able to talk to her. And you're going to be able to talk to her. Uh, we also got in touch with her brother. So hopefully he can get her on that phone where you'll be able to talk with her and maybe sing for her too. Because she is just so down to earth. Uh, Peggy told me she was going to try to, she was going to come back home and start. It's on my YouTube where she said she was going to start helping the younger uh, artists. And that was something she wanted to do. So we hope that this be able to get to her and you let me know when she called you. Because that's going to be, I want her to talk to you. I really do. Um, that would be a blessing. That would be an honor. Now, I wanted to ask you this. I wanted to ask you this. If a, if a young girl right now is watching and she want to sing on American Idol and she want to sing, uh, what would what would your advice be to her? My advice would be if she's trying to audition for American Idol, um, learn more than one job. Make sure you have more than one song prepared <laughs> for your audition and be prepared hair to sing a variety of music um and uh just just belt it out and let it go pretend like there's no one in the room with you and let them have it and let them have it and that's exactly what you did miss go <laughs> you let them have it that's exactly what you did uh, i want to commend you on just going all the way with your dream and being a little girl singing and coming up. Now, I wanted to ask you something else. You say your father was into music. Give give us a little bit about, about your dad. What was his My name father. again? Uh, Guitar Slim Cole. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Um, my father uh, played the guitar and sang the blues as well. And he has an album out, and he has some records out. Uh, one of them is They Call Me Slim Cole Baby. Um, so he, I was able to find... Thank God I was able to, to find some of his music and I actually ordered some of it. Um, it's, you know, it's, of course, back in the day um, because he was born in 1934. So, but I was just blessed to be able to get some of his music in my hands. But uh, that is where my inspiration started uh, as far as my love for blues. With your father? With my father. I know he's in heaven smiling. Down on his baby girl. <laughs> I know he's smiling. Wow. I I want to thank you for this interview. This will conclude our interview. Thank you for coming on Jazz Red Talk Show. You all uh you all hold on. Stay stay tuned. You're going to see her perform at the end of the show. All right. Uh thank you so much for this interview, Miss Cole. Thank you. I appreciate you. All right. Jazz Red. We love you. Peace out. Jazz Red Talk Show, and I'm your host, Jazz Red. I met this young lady here, and she had some school shirts she was giving away free. What's your name, ma'am? Jolene. Jolene, what inspired you to want to give away school shirts? I mean... I think uh, it's really Jesus. Like, the love of the Lord honestly provokes me to be nice to people, to do anything in love. Like, without Him, when I didn't have Him, you don't have that uh, generosity. You don't generally care that much about other people. But, I mean, the Lord blessed me, so yes. I just bless other people. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, you got up. You, you met me. I came early. You said, I'm on my way. I'm coming. Uh, thank you for taking time out your busy schedule to give some school shirts yes. to this family. Yes. Thank you so much. Jazz Red, we love you. Y'all get out of here. Jazz Red, we love you. Yes. And this is the book. The woman that lived, the woman who lived twice. This is a great book. I read it all the way through. But now, we finna talk with the author. Y'all, the author, y'all know how Jazz Red do it. Put it on down, girl. Put it down. Put it down. We finna talk with the author. We talking with the author right now. Now, what's your name now, ma'am? Well, now I'm Pastor Elder Loretta Handy Jackson. Okay, all right. Tell my viewers a little something about this book. And I'm going to want you to speak up. I know you got a soft voice, but see, they hear me because I'm right by the camera. So well, you got this book published. Tell my viewers about this as book. As the book says on the front of the book, 
Uh, it's the tell-all story of Loretta Williams, which was my stage name when I was singing with Otis Redding back in the days. Uh, it's a tell-all story book of Loretta Williams and, the, and her days on the road with the late, great Otis Redding. And it says that I lived on the devil's side and did pretty good. But now I'm on God's side and I'm doing even better. Okay. And that's my life story right there. That's your life story. Amen. Put the book I had down two and lives. tell them about that book. Tell them about that book. Tell them what well, they can look for in it. I've had two lives. Okay. One I lived for the devil, as the book said, and one for the Lord. But this book goes way back beyond Otis Redding. It begins when I was born in the old Mobile General Hospital here in Mobile, Alabama. It tells about my mother, my father, and the days of old, how they used to <coughs> work in the houses of the white people and the things that my father went through and my mother went through with raising me. And I lost my father at an early age. It tells all about the type of person he was and what he was and how my mother had to go through a lot of things, losing her husband with a young child and one on the way. And it also tells about our life when we were back in the uh, segregation times I, and it tells about my life uh, with a, a, a stepfather that I, I, I had to learn to get along with and I didn't want to learn to get along with and the okay. abuse that I went through uh, at the hands of my stepfather and all the other things that we went through I'm trying to get through school and no one to help me and just a lot of things that went on back in the 50s and the 60s that people uh, you can relate to because I'm sure they went through a lot of things also. Okay. And how I was in the church. I started at a young age in the church, singing in the choirs. From three years old up, I was singing in somebody's choir. And how they found me and discovered me for singing rock and roll. I was on the radio, singing with a, a gospel group called the Lewis Gospel Singers. And from there, uh, everybody remembers Dr. Jive, Leon Lowe, picked me up. He heard me and he asked me to come and sing with his band. I think it was the Croquettes at that time. Okay. And I went from that band to the Ebony, uh, the Knights of Ebony, and started working for Mr. Tom Couch. Everybody in the United States knew about Tom Couch mm -hmm. and and the uh, club that he had the uh, on the on Forty Five. It was well known, uh, and everybody would come to his club. Sure would. He and would bring a lot, like Ike and Tina Turner. Everybody came, yes. and that's how I got a chance to meet a lot of the stars, because I was always on program there, opening up for the, the known artists. I would open the shows. So uh, after Leon Lowe gave me a job, and I started working for him and uh, several other uh, guys here in Mobile and several clubs here, they heard me on the radio. And this particular week, Otis Redding was coming to town. Yeah. And Tom Couch and had uh, the Club Harlem. That's what I'm trying Club to remember. Harlem. Club sure Harlem. Sure was. Sure was. Club Harlem. Everybody was coming to Club Harlem. That was Joe Tex, Johnny Taylor, uh, Little Richard, uh, Patty LaBelle stayed there all the time. I can tell you, Turner stayed there all the time. They were always here in Mobile because we would draw. They would draw a crowd here in Mobile. They would pack the house. Okay. So there was Bobby Blue Band and all the great artists that was there, and that's how I got a chance to meet so many of them, right here at the Club Harlem. And Otis Redding was coming to town that particular weekend. I was going to open the show, and Otis came in and he met me, and he really didn't really know who I was until after I had sung, and while I was singing on stage opening the show up that night, he came out to the stage and he looked and he kind of just stayed there and looked and he said, I want that girl. So after the show was over, he um, asked me to come to his dressing room and Tom took me back there and I met him and he said, I love your show. He said, girl, you are awesome. You are hot. He said, you rock the house. Me and the guys would just tickle pink just to hear you. Yeah. And he said, um, if I offered you a job tonight, would you go? I said, sure would. He said, tonight? I said, yeah, I'll go tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he said, when can you leave? I was just kidding. He said, when can you leave? I'm going to get me a little rest while I'm here. I'm going to enjoy the coast a little bit while I'm here for about a week. He said, you'll be ready in a few days if I take you with me? I said, I sure will. And so he said, let me talk to Tom. He said, if Tom will let me go with you. Tom was kind of managing me at the time. Yeah. He said, if Tom let me go, let you go with me, will you go? I said, yeah. 
So he talked to Tom, and Tom told him if he promised to do me do me a record deal, yeah. then he would let me go. He'd let you go. And he signed my contract over to him. And that's what happened. And Otis Redding, he just flipped out and said, this is the girl. We, we need her for the show. And I was with him from that time on for about four to five years. I traveled with him and was with all the greats. Uh, Ray Charles, The Temptations, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Joe Tex, Johnny Taylor, Sam Cooke. Everybody was on with Otis because we had the 28-piece dancing orchestra. Okay. See, all this is in the book. A lot of people don't know all the inside mm -hmm. stories of what went on behind the scenes okay. of all these great stars and the rock and roll, how big it was, and what happened behind closed doors. And I know the story because I lived with them five or six years. I was on the road with them. I made good money. Of course, back there in the 60s, eight, nine hundred $900 a week was a lot of money, especially okay. just blacks. Mm -hmm. And we all worked on salaries. That's why you hear little Richard saying, I never made any money till now. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't making money back then. He wasn't. We all were on salary. Jane Brown, everybody. We worked for Phil Walden's Enterprises. Everybody knows Phil Walden out of Macon, Georgia. Okay. And he had all of us signed under contracts where we got paid weekly. Hmm. A salary. Not the money that we made, okay. just a salary. But it was good money. And I was able to take care of my kids and uh, be able to send money home for them and for my apartment and all. And of course, being on the road, of course I always had somebody I was in love with. Okay. <laughs> I had somebody I was in love with and didn't know what I really wanted to go, but I know I needed that money. Yes. So I went on the road with this show. And Otis immediately started talking to me about doing a record deal. Okay. And I thought that was going to be awesome for me to really sing with the great Otis Redding Band, mm -hmm. which was a 28-piece dancing orchestra. And you can imagine what it was like to be on the road with 28 men, just one woman. Okay. But Otis always made uh, provisions for me because we had the brand new bus. Otis had two buses he bought during the time I was with him, and it was brand new buses and we traveled very well, and back in those days, though, blacks weren't allowed to be in the hotels that you can go in. There was only a few hotels we could go in. There were a few places we could go and eat at. So Otis decided he would get us a nice bus to travel in. And traveling on the road with 28 men, that was a job. That was something to behold. And I tell all the details about it in this book. In the book. I and, read it. And I had been married before, but I was single at this time. And uh, I was in love with my second husband uh, at that time, Frank Patterson. And um, I hadn't married him yet. But I left and went on the road because I wanted that exposure. That's right. And I needed that exposure. I got a chance to sing at the Apollo, the Howard Theater in Washington, D.C. Of course, the Apollo in New York, the uh, Houston Coliseums. Every big place that Otis went, he made sure that I was on the show. And I got a chance to meet all the stars, the Four Tops, the Temptations, the Shy Lights, the Spinners. I was there. That's why I look on TV now and say, now all these people that are still on TV and they're still being praised and recognized. And nobody knows I was right out there with them. That, yes. We, well, they're going to know this time. They're going to know now. Yeah, I'm hoping. Because, see, this book is a movie. They've made movies on every great artist except the Otis Reddy. And I have the story. That's why I'm trying to get it to the people to know that I'm alive. I, it has even been said that I died in the plane crash. And you weren't in there. I wasn't even in the plane crash. What? I had left the show about a month before Otis died because we got into it about the money over the record. And that's usually the problem. Mm -hmm. When you get big and you start getting big, they want to control all your money. Okay. They don't want to give you your money. So I got upset and not using my head. I got fly by and I'm kind of flippy. <laughs> okay. I should have stayed and worked it out. I might would have gotten some of my money. But I left the show, and he got killed about a month after I left the show. And I was saying he was such a young man. He was so young. He had just made 26 million. I about said, the now, same what age. did he do for something like that to happen? I was wondering, how did he treat wild. people? He was wild. He was enthusiastic. 
He was a great artist, one of the greatest artists that I ever saw out there. He had a voice like nobody okay. else, and his show was awesome. Okay. His show was so exciting. When he put on the show, you think you went to church in the club. Yeah. We'd them, have church in the club. With them tear top, <laughs> yeah, teardrop shoes. Yeah, because he really Ooh. came from the church. Oh, this was singing in church before he started singing, I was too. So okay. we kind of related with each other about that church thing. Okay. And we both put on the soul, soul rock and show. Okay. That's why he could relate to me and I could relate to him because we both have been in some exciting churches. Mm. And we had that soul in us, that drive to really make people move and shout and want to dance and everything else. So, Otis was a type of person that he just he, he just wanted to do things quick in life. He, okay. he was just too fast. He was living his life too fast. The drugs, the, the marijuana, the women. And the women were just coming from everywhere. And you know, a man in his stature that came from a poor background and down in the south where he said he felt like he had been abused by the white man and so many people had been against him and his father when he was okay. in Georgia. He had a little animosity in him. Okay. So he wanted to put himself out there to let them know, see me now. Okay. I see understand. what I am now. He I said understand. I wasn't going to do it, but I did it. Mm -hmm. And he made a lot of people out of a liar that he wasn't going to make nothing out of himself, but, okay. he but he did. He had his own ranch. All the animals you could see, and he'd take us to the ranch there in Georgia, and he had his own bus, everything. And people don't know that Otis Redding was the first black to own his own label, Jody. So I made history. I made history with Otis because I was the first success. I made the top ten charts uh, with, the, with the record Missing You and Baby Cakes. I was the first on his label, the first artist to put his label out there. Me and Arthur Conley, he was doing Arthur Conley and me, and maybe one other person, but we was the only ones that got a chance to get on his label. And he was the first black to own his own label. Own his own label. Yeah, and, and, and it wasn't any blacks at that time owning their own labels. Otis Redding was the first, and it was called Jodis. I think it was him and Joe Gawkin, where he got that name from. Yeah. Somewhere out of Stack Records and all. And it was just an exciting life, but Otis had his little ways. He was mm -hmm. very tough. Very tough. Okay. And when he said he wanted to do something, he wanted to like we'd be traveling a lot, and I'd be got settled in for the night in the hotel, thinking everything of it. All right, everybody, get up. We gotta go. We gotta go. We haven't had but two hours sleep tonight. We gotta go. Everybody, get your clothes on. I leave bras, underwear, everything else in the hotel where I don't wash and everything. You gotta get up and go. You got to go. Got to go when he say go. And he he was just and then he could get mean and tough because. He had that fight in him. Okay. Otis was kind of tough when he was down in Georgia with fighting and shooting and all this kind of stuff. But um, sometimes he would make us upset the way he would treat us about the money. Okay. He would not ever want us to get all of our money. He'd make us take a draw. Nobody want to take a draw. We want our money so we can send it home. You That's know. right. That's no, right. you're not going to get all your money. You're going to get half and we're going to get the other half. And I don't want half. I want all my money. That's right. But he had that thing going. I guess he... Love that money so much he didn't want to see that big payroll going out so fast. Okay. So he wanted us to take a draw in the middle of the week and he'd pay us some on the weekend and we all fell out about that. Him and the guys were fighting about that and he would jump on the guys and I saw him jump on a guy one night that was drunk and it just hurt me to my heart. I didn't like him doing that, but that was his way of doing things. Okay. And a lot of the guys didn't like him, but he was good in his own way. And I always respect him because he gave me opportunity. He gave me a chance, and I can't, I'm not trying to put him down. I wouldn't try and put him down. I understand. He, he's a guy that you just had to understand him. And to work with him, you had to really know him. But he believed in perfection. He believed in getting something. And he wanted to be the biggest thing out there. And he could have done that. But a few more years to his life, he would have been one of the greatest. Right. He would have been just as great as Michael Jackson. Michael would have been out there like Mike. He would have been out there like Mike because there was no other voice, no other sound like his band. Nor the sound like him. And I want to give vent to the Otis Redding Band. Okay. 28 pe people that could read music. Sheet okay. music. Sheet music. I mean, they, these guys with Otis were the best okay. in, this, in the country. And he would pick up the best. When we go to different cities and he'd hear about this guy, but you got to read music. That's why we got a chance to play and sing behind everybody because 
Otis Redding band could read music, could read sheet music. music. Yeah. And we go to those theaters, they lay your sheets out there for them to play. Okay. And there was nothing that Otis Redding band could play. Couldn't play. He was even playing pay, uh, playing Betty, Barry, Barry Gordy's music. They, or they could read the sheet music. They could read the yeah. sheet music. So when okay. we worked with the Temps and uh, the Tops, Four Tops and uh, Martha and Vandellas and the Jelly Beans, I think it was someone else that would usually be on the shows with us from Motown, Otis Redding band could play it. Yeah. I mean, stomp down, kick it, okay. and was a 28-piece dancing orchestra. That's what made them so exciting because they put on a show. They put on a show. They put on a show. You yeah. get your money's worth when you go to Otis Redding's show. Yeah. But the thing that bugged me so much uh, about being out there, they had so much to offer you that could ruin your life. Okay. It could even get you killed. Okay. And we had a bad habit of being known as robbers and thieves out there. Because we go from hotel to hotel, they'd be taking the folks' blankets and pillows and <laughs> sheets and everything from the hotels and the police and the sheriff running behind the bus trying to get the hotel stuff back. Yeah. Oh, it was an exciting life, but they didn't make it right, but it was fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> being it young. Was fun. Yeah, and we being were all young. young. And that's another thing. We look at the artists now, you look at our age, but everybody out there started young. We were almost like, just getting out of our teens and early 20s, you know, everybody was very young. Okay. And if you look at the Motown list, they were too. Uh, uh, Diana Ross, all of them were very young. We all started young. And and we had Aretha traveling with us, Aretha Franklin. No, you did And we had Ike and Tina with us all the time. Okay. And all the stories that... Hey, he ain't, whoop, he ain't whooping in front of y'all. Right there. in front of us. Oh, my gracious. We saw it so many times in the Rice oh, Theater. Oh, Ike. Rice Hotel in, in, in Texas. We'll never forget that was a big fight. I think that might have been the fight scene they have in her movie uh, that him and her had. Mm. And Aretha, she was having problems with her husband. And... We saw this. It's not a lie. It's the truth. It's the truth. And I'm sure when Aretha's movie comes out, you're going to see a lot of things that went on back there that's really, that really did happen because I was right there to see it. Okay. And, you know, I, I, I want people to know that my life was one to be told about. Okay. This book needs to be a movie. We know it, do. I've it's read it. It's a movie, and I've everybody ever saw good. this book said, this is a movie. It's good. It's a great movie, and it's exciting. It'll hold you spellbound to your seat at least two or three hours. It, it will. It I can read go it. four hours, and nobody would leave the movie. I promise you. And I tell in this book all the lies of my, uh, my story of my life with my first husband, mm -hmm. my second husband, okay. and my third husband. Okay. Well, Jay hadn't got a chance to get in there yet because he's my fourth husband. <laughs> okay. But... He's in my second book, though. Okay. But I tell my life with each one, my story with each one of these men and what I went through with them. And why my life had to change to come over on God's side. I went through a lot of things. People just don't know until they read this book what I went through. I went through almost dying three or four or five times in my life. Okay. And God saved me. That's why I'm saved today. Okay. That's why I'm working for God today, because he deserves the glory and the praise for what I went through and how I lived through those things that I went through. The devil been trying to kill me for a long time. Mm -hmm. I went through a lot of tragedies in my life. I went through a lot of suffering and pain in my life. And people just don't know they see me up jumping and shouting and preaching and singing like I do. Yes. I got a right to do it. That's right. And I got a reason to do it. And this book can show you how your life can be turned around. Because the life, the way I was going, I could have ended up dead. Uh, I read where you said uh, a man had snatched your purse, took your purse and left. Um, Otis talked about me so bad mm -hmm. that night. Two times he cursed me for everything he could curse me for. And talked about me so bad till <laughs> I wanted to just fall out and die. He made me feel so bad. But I was in Miami, and this was during the Ray Charles show. Okay. We had done the Ray Charles show. And then we had some one-nighters after the Ray Charles show in Miami, Florida. And I think we were in Fort Lauderdale or somewhere over there in that area at a, night, a big club there. And I had done my show, and I was hot, and I wanted to walk outside. And so Otis gave me the key. He said, go sit out in the car if you want to go out there, but be careful. I goes out in the car and sit in his Cadillac. I'm sitting in the Cadillac. <laughs> Here comes this nice, attractive young man. Oh, they were always bothering me all the time, but I didn't have any idea that this was a thief and a robber. Okay. I was just trying to be nice, you know. 
And he was trying to tell me how he enjoyed the show and how good I sang and my performance and all. And he was leaning in the window. And I'm sitting in the car with my purse and my windbreaker right next to me. I had no idea the man was trying getting ready to rob me. And uh, he was just talking, I guess he got my attention. And next thing I know, he snatched my purse and was gone before I could even look up good. This guy had, okay, I guess, reached through the window, talking to me while I, he had my attention and got my purse and was gone in an instant. And all I could see was him running through the alley. So I breaks in the club and tell oh, this them somebody didn't rob and stole my purse and everything I had in it. Everything I had really that was worth anything was in that purse. Okay. It was a big bag. ID and everything. Everything that I needed to be on the road with. Yeah. Plus my kids, my picture, the pictures of my children, my wallet, all my money that I needed for the I'm rest hoping, of the week. I'm hoping some <laughs> young girl is listening to you right now Here you go. with those Hollywood dreams there and you thinking go. You there got you know. to have a full armor guard on you out there. I'm you telling you, and you got bad. to. They say it's you got to know what you're doing when you go on this road. Mm -hmm. You see the American Idol and the Voice. It's more to it than what you see. Okay. The lights and the glam, the big lights and the glam, and all yes. of it. What you go on and what you go through with behind the scene is what they got to learn about. Okay. If I hadn't had one good friend with me that I took to on that road to protect me on that road. Mm -hmm. I've been vulnerable, vulnerable to everybody and everything. Everybody and everything. But God fixed the way. I had one guy on the show that looked after me. And then, uh, i never forget, Sam and Dave was just like my little brothers. Okay. Sam and Dave, you know, yeah. Sam and Dave Oh, show. yeah, I know who you're talking about. Sam and Dave, we lived together. Uh, Solomon Burke, all of us. Lived, and but, but Sam and Dave were like my brothers. Okay. They would look after me. And we even rent, when we, we, we book a hotel, we book our rooms together so they could be there to protect me at all times. Okay. And then this guy was called Mac Rhodes. He was um, Otis Road Manager or Band Manager. And he took to me and he started really trying to see to me being in the right places, doing the right thing. But this particular night, I didn't tell him where I was going. I just okay. went on out the building. And when I did get back in there, Otis talked about me like a dog. He said, I told you, you are not in Mobile, Alabama. Okay. You cannot walk out here and be alone out here and meeting and talking to everybody. That's why we keep you in the, in the back behind stage so we can watch okay. you. You can't do that. These people will rob you or kill you. He said, you don't know how close you could have got killed out there. And then you got the booger in my car. The guy could have killed you and took my car. Sure could. You had my yeah. keys. That's right. That's right. He was highly upset with me. Yeah, so he I had to, to groom you. They had to groom they you. They tried. Young. They tried. They tried. But I still was silly. But was but silly. Then we want to get on this right quick before okay. we do end this uh, uh, interview. The money. The money. That was the problem. That's why I left the show because. They right never, now they're playing your song. Everywhere. Over in England. Are you getting any money off of that? No, no royalties at all. No royalties. We want somebody to see this because we're putting yes. it on YouTube. And I want somebody to come forward and to help you because I, I've met a lot of people on Facebook that are out of town. Yes. And I want them to see and hear what you're saying yes. that you're not getting any royalty off of Baby Cake. What's the other song? Missing You. Missing You. I mean, you're supposed to get paid. BMI is supposed to been looking out for that. Yeah. But you're supposed to get paid for yeah. everything. That was a a lot went on in, in that book that people you are look, look ladies and gentlemen I tell you you got to get this book you have got to get it because I didn't let it go I read it all in one sitting Amen. I just stayed there and read it uh, it let me know how they'll do you out there I'm I, you know I'm funny about a lot of stuff anyway but you and you're not getting any royalties off of your hit songs well since I left the rock field Okay. Rock and roll, and I, I've gotten saved. When I got saved, I just never looked back. I probably could have got it if I had have thought about it earlier. Yeah. When I first left the show, I, yeah. I really should have had somebody looking into this for me. But I thought one way or the other, sooner or later, I was going to be able to get an attorney or somebody to see to me getting that. But I was so involved in the church, okay. I just kind of put it on the back burner. Okay. But when I heard that Frankie Lyman had gotten 40 years back pay, mm-hmm. For um, Why Do Fools Fall in Love and all the songs that he did. They never paid him either. And so many, like Little Richard, he never got paid up until these last years of his life. Yeah. Uh, all the hit records that Little Richard had out. But my record was under Otis because at that time we were young and silly. We didn't know anything about contracts. Okay, I understand. See, these guys now that's putting records in these rappers, they know the contract business. Okay. We didn't know it. Okay. And I just signed whatever Otis said signed. 
I didn't know I was signing a lot of my rights away, and he has the rights to my records and rights to my songs. Now, in this time, in this day and hour, when I really could be getting something from it, I don't have any rights. They stole my rights. Okay. And then his wife completely just wiped me off the map and told people that I was dead. Okay. And here I am well and alive. On and yet singing. Show. <laughs> yeah. And I'm uh -huh. yet singing. And yet singing. And, and, and I can sing just about as good as anybody and got out there singing. And got a book published. Cause I, went, I was at your book signing That's at right. Barnes and & Noble. And I'm still alive. And yes. people don't know. And they are asking on the internet, where is this lady that made that one-time hit with Otis Red? And what happened? She was from Mobile, Alabama. I'm, I'm yet alive. And I have this book that the world is waiting to read and see mm -hmm. called The Woman Who Lived Twice. The story of my life with Otis Redding is in it. It's not his book. This is my life story. Okay. But he was a part of my life. That's right. That's and right. so much that I learned behind the scenes, it's in this book. Now, what I need is for someone to call me, mm -hmm. seek me out for my records. That's I'm right. yet making records. I, 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 I cut my first gospel album at the Muscle Show Sound, the biggest studio in, in, in the South, where Otis used to cut records, and also uh, Aretha recorded right there at Muscle Show Sound. That's where my record was done. Okay. I have three gospel albums, but I need for someone to interview me nationally. That's I need right. a national That's TV right. interview yeah, to did. let these people, I got so much to tell. Mm -hmm. I've got so much to show them. And I have pictures in this book of all the artists as Martha and the Vandellas. Well, let's zoom into them. Let's zoom into them. This is Martha and the Vandellas, ladies and gentlemen. You went down so fast. Uh oh, did you I? You took go it down fast? so fast. Let's just show them. Let's look at them, ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. Martha and the Vandellas. Give me another. And, and we have. Um, she has so many pictures in here. This uh, is uh, Carla Thomas and Sam and Dave. I, I was on show. Okay, with. let's see where Carla. That's you there in that dress, ain't Everybody it? Everybody think it is, but it's Carla Thomas. Oh, it's Carla Thomas, okay. And here we got, uh, she's so fast, ladies Am and I gentlemen. too fast? Who is that on that other page? This Come is on. Uh, New Collier. He's one of the oldest Reddings uh, trumpet players, his head trumpet player. And okay. this is a band. Okay, give me one with Otis Redding. Do you have one with Otis Redding in there? Otis then we're gonna, is in here. Yeah. We're going to get ready. we got to give you a phone number. Give me your phone number while you're looking. Okay, this is Otis in the studio. Okay, let's zoom in Otis. They is in the studio, the fat, 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 fat man. <laughs> Give them your phone number. We want somebody to okay. help you, and uh, we're gonna load. We're gonna we got on that jazz red show first, but we're Sam gonna put and it, Cook, Sam uh, Cook, and uh, I Okay, Charlie let's Fox. do Sam Cook because I got his book. I read his book. Oh man, that is. I was on the show with all of these. People. Lord have mercy, handsome. He's Lord handsome. Sam Cook got stabbed. Lord, oh my, lost ooh. his life for nothing. Sure did. Give them a phone number. Let's go with that phone number. You can reach me at 251-391-2147. 391-2147. Mm -hmm. I want somebody that's looking at R this to help her. Or 251-533-7847. All right, these numbers are running across the screen. We're going to want you okay. all to get with Miss Loretta Handy Jackson. Jackson. Because I want you all to, uh, I mean, it's a movie. I read the book and it's, it's good. It's, it's good. But we've got a, we got some tape you got to cut. And we got to see some things. So I, somebody in Hollywood, Tyler Perry and all of them know about me. And we're going to put it on YouTube. And hopefully, hopefully all the rest of them. And I want to tell Tyler, the book is free. It's free now, away from any detachments. Okay. They wrote me before about my book. Okay. But it was some detachments concerning okay. my records. But now I want him to know that all the rights are set free now. He can call me back about all this right. book. All right, Tyler, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a Facebook you, too. When you send another one Amen. out on my Facebook, you need to get in touch with her, and we can do that movie that you wanted to do, a play or whatever. Yes. Uh, she's, it's the book available is free. now. It's available. With the book no is free. attachment. That's right. I know how it is. But uh, I've enjoyed this interview with you. I was at your book signing, and I enjoyed that. You had oh, your, yes. oh, oh, your CDs. Don't um, forget the CDs. Yeah, yeah. Let me get them. Let me get them. Let me get them. Right quick. Right quick. We got to show the CDs. We got to show the CD. Right now, we're using them as a fundraiser. Well, uh, hold it around to the camera. Hold it around to the camera. This is the, the camera world. need to see it. I know you're looking at it. Just hold it right there. Okay. The world we share. Okay. And what's the next one? The world we share. How and much are these CDs? And right now, we're doing a promotion for the church of just $10. Okay. What's the next one? $10. And this one is 
uh, the Second Chance album on my first album. Okay. And it has a, a variation of all my songs on it. Okay. But this is my latest songs here, and it is so awesome. It's a worldwide song. Okay. It's an international song that everybody needs to hear this. Okay. And all right, all. so you got two. Get that phone number out again. Phone number is 251-391-2147 or 251-533-7847. Right. And they know how to get in touch with me at Second Chance, Full Gospel Church, 155 Ninth Avenue. Write me. Mobile, Alabama. 36611. All right, all right. <laughs> That's right. We got to get it all out. We got to get it out there. You get her phone number. I need number. that interview, y'all. Yeah. Call me. Yeah. I'm, I'm alive. I can tell you everything you need to know about Otis Redding. That's right. That's right. She got it. I'm telling I you, it. I read the book. All right. This will conclude our interview. I have enjoyed it. You've held this audience because you've held me. <laughs> tell them God bless them, the woman of God. God bless you. We love you and we appreciate you. Come visit me. Let me talk to you in person. That's Amen. right. Second chance. Sure. Second chance. Jazz Red. Gospel. We love you. This is very interesting, okay? Lincoln was elected president in 1860, exactly 100 years later. In 1960, Kennedy was elected president. Both men were deeply involved in civil rights for Negroes. Both men were assassinated on a Friday in the presence of their wife. Each wife had lost a son while living at the White House. Both men were killed by a bullet that entered the head from behind. Kennedy was killed in Ford's Theater. No, Lincoln was killed in Ford's Theater. Kennedy met his death while riding in a Lincoln convertible made by Ford Motor Company. Moving the camera. We're going with seven. Both men were succeeded by vice presidents named Johnson, who were Southern Democrats and former senators. Andrew Johnson was born in 1808. Lyndon Johnson was born in 1908, exactly 100 years later. We're going with number nine. The first number, the first name in Lincoln's private secretary of Lincoln's private secretary was John. The last name of Kennedy's private secretary was Lincoln. John Will Booth was born in 1839, according to some sources. Lee Harvey Oswald was born in 1939. 100 years later. Both, let's see, yeah, you can see 11. Both assassins were Southerners who were held extreme, who held extremist views. We're going to 12. We're at 12. Both assassins were murdered before they could be brought to trial. Booth shot Lincoln in a theater and fled to a barn. Oswald shot Kennedy from a warehouse and fled to a theater. 14. Kennedy, Lincoln and Kennedy each have seven letters. All right, 15. Andrew Johnson and Lyndon Johnson each has 13 letters. 16. John Will Booth and Lee Harvey Oswald each have 15 letters. Now Jazz is going to throw something in she's seen at, on the internet about this. Also, Lincoln had been, had visited Mar Monroe, Maryland. He had visited Monroe, Maryland. And John Kennedy had been with Marilyn Monroe. Hope you enjoyed that. Think about it. Jazz or Red. Peace out. I want to thank you personally for making me your best man. 
even though I know you didn't like me. And the only reason why I accepted the offer, because you was engaged to my sister. I don't know what she saw in you, but I decided to go along with it for her sake. But I want you to know this, that's my little sister. Take care of her, I'm watching you. It's your girl, Cami Cole, and I would like to dedicate this performance to Miss Jazzy Red's TV show and to all of her viewers, especially the sick and shut-in. And I can't forget about my dear mother, Miss Lula May Cole. She passed away in 2019 with Alzheimer's, and that is when I began to write this record, Take Me Back. I hope y'all enjoy it. Thank you. 
again, y'all. My name is Cammie Cole. Much love. Y'all stay safe out there. See you soon.